Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Miller is an associate professor of communication and a Fulbright scholar. I uh, was teaching in research, uh, focuses on the connections between forms of communication, uh, such as mass media and journalism, public speech, uh, uh, community organizing, democratic participation, and social justice. And he is in uh, here right now. I've been a faculty advisor to WPNR, so he knows radio. You've been doing that for a long time, right? Uh, I was doing radio in high school. PNR is one... That's back when your couch came in here, right? It might be, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah. You can imagine what's inside the cushions on mm. that. Uh, okay, we won't think about that. Uh, so, uh, but WPNR has been around. Uh, it's one of those, I believe, one of those legendary college stations yeah. uh, around the country. It really is. Um, so, okay, what uh, do you make of all of this? Uh, you know, the media being the enemy of the of the people. Uh, what do you make of this whole thing? Well, you're the mainstream media, aren't you, Bill? Uh, I don't know. Is that? Yeah. What, I guess we are. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely. Guess that's what we we fit this isn't into. This is a pirate underground radio station, right? Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely true. It's so all of mainstream media. So you're an enemy of the people too. Yeah, scary to hear that. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I think. Uh, you know, the presidents for 150 years have been uh, right opponents of the media. Yeah, uh, this is uh, I, this is taking things to an entirely different. Nixon level. probably took it to in modern day. Nixon probably took yeah. it to the to the to the extreme, but nothing like this. Well, I mean, certainly the Reagan administration was very smart to you know feed the room with with journalists they liked. Yes, I mean the Bush administration, you know, infamously you know, gave a press pass to a guy that turned out to be. You know, some dodgy character that wasn't a journalist, but now you've got bloggers and all kinds yeah, of people yeah. in the room. Which, and it'll be, even Obama refused to yeah, uh, do interviews with Fox. Every News. Every White so. House controls the message. Every, yeah. every White House wants. Of course, I mean, everybody knows the game. Every reporter knows what yeah, the game yeah. is. Uh, and you know that uh, you know with the uh, with the communications team and the media, there is a bit of back and forth that we will never see. Yeah, um, and you know you see it on some of these shows where they uh, you know they'll argue back and forth and how how could you uh, how could you ambush the president like that so you you have uh, this back and forth does exist we know but it's, again never have seen it to this right. extreme. And if you think about it, the press secretaries in the past they used to, they used to come from from the media yeah right they were yeah. reporters they knew people there was back channel mm -hmm. they were friends. And now you have a situation where they want to move them out of the room. They want yeah. to put them in another facility, and you know and the first five questions are going to bloggers from websites you've never heard of before. Yeah, at least I haven't heard of. Them. Well, and uh, so how do we? Uh, and it's interesting. Um, we have seen the president uh, move um, against intelligence, yeah. and he has uh, in more ways than one. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and he has, uh, and he's kind of backtracked there. He he has a relationship with them now. Do you think there's a chance that uh, that this might change, and all of a sudden the media? I I, I, I answer that one first. I guess. Well, I th I th it's a, he's in an interesting bind. He's a businessman. Yeah. So he understands profit making. Mm -hmm. You know what is it? Ninety eight percent of broadcasting in America is commercial enterprise. Right. So I mean, you know, the idea that the idea that all the major, uh, well, the, the 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 media survey that just came out that made the big kerfuffle, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really only only asking questions about three of the major. Uh, cable TV networks, right. all of whom operate on profit. I mean, right, they're, right. they're they're hardly ideological organs. And I, mean, and that's, I, that's I have that so, I have that argument with uh, with people yeah. all the time. You guys are uh, you're all uh, you only care about one thing: your agenda. No, you don't yeah. understand. You, you care about business in a week. You care about one thing, <laughs> right. and it depends on who you are. Right. You as the reporter today, yeah. you care about clicks. Yeah, that's right. Um, as the company, you care about advertisers, yeah, and course. that's the end of it, right that's there. Right. Yeah. I mean, if MSNBC was so radical, so radically to the left, yeah. do you really think anyone would be advertising on that, on that right, network? Right. No one would. So, yeah. I mean, as a businessman, he knows better. But I realize, I mean, there's an ideological, there's a propagandistic. It's working, you know, by the way. Well, it is. And, you know, the, 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 the survey that went out, I don't know who in the world is taking that survey. I was tempted to try to fill it out a thousand times just to see if I could skew their data. But I realized <laughs> that, I mean, it's... And the survey we talked about yesterday, uh, the survey is no pollster would put no that survey out because every question was loaded. No, prof no professional right. would be. Well, you know, so it raises two questions. In my mind, it could go either way. Either it was created by someone who literally doesn't know what they're doing, and maybe we're seeing a lot of that in the first 30 days of, yeah, of a new White yeah. House. Maybe mm -hmm. we are. Either that or it's, you know, crazy like a fox kind of stuff where yeah. someone really does know. 
Right. I mean, we know what goes wrong when you write a poll and you and you create terrible questions. Mm-hmm. We know what happens when you create a poll and it's and it's in, it's intended to push opinions rather yeah, than yeah. Men. we know what happens. And usually we say, oh well, that's terrible. Don't do that. But of course, all you got to do is study how to make the worst possible poll. Right. And I mean, this one just takes the cake. It it's, does. It's got it really, every aspect yeah. of what you normally would not do. Yeah. No. You, no matter uh, what side you are on the uh, on the argument, you look at that poll and it's just it, it is uh, it's it's a laughable uh, poll. And, uh, and scary in, a, in uh, other ways, I, I felt. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, at, uh, Orwell's rolling over in his grave. Yeah, I, I don't um, have a specific example because I, I didn't plan to ask this question or yeah. make this observation, but I, uh, I try to watch all the networks and uh, I'm a junkie. Yeah. So um, I, I, I've noticed a change in CNN almost as if they've had a meeting that said, well, listen, when I'm looking back on the stuff that we've done here, we're really going after the president. And some of that has been created. I think it's all been created by this. The president has completely attacked CNN uh, personally yeah. through their reporters and uh, and as a uh, as a as a business. But I'm noticing stories as of late that have that have a different tone, almost as if they're saying, well, let's try to show the other side. Uh, have you observed any of that? And, and may, if that's the case, maybe what Trump has been doing is working a little bit. Well, I don't know. Is there some middle ground where the two of them are going to meet? I don't think so. I don't think so either. No, I don't I think mean, so. I mean, we have an adversarial yeah. press. Yeah. Which I is, mean, if you don't like that, uh, yeah. you know, then you shouldn't have run for president in the last 200 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, by the way, is important for, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an important part of our system, our free, our, our free system. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up on Mad Magazine. Oh, my goodness. They yeah. savaged every yeah. president since, uh, since George yeah. Washington. SNL has, yeah. uh, oh, and by the way, ratings finally. are thriving right roof. now. Yeah. And, it's, and it is finally funny. It's topical. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, I find that Saturday Night Live is at its worst when it's doing some general thing about PMS or something. Yeah. Here you've got some meat to grab onto, and it's, um, again, no matter the side you're on, yeah. it's, it, it can be funny. You made it great again. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you tell, uh, what do you tell students? What's what your observation? I tell, I'll tell you, I've had to rethink uh, a lot of the standard stuff I do every semester in class. You know, um, we're just talking right now about how the ratings business works. Yeah. You know, and the idea that... Uh, um, you know, viewers get blamed. You know, if you don't like what's on TV, it's your fault. Change the channel, uh, which is a which is a strange thing to tell somebody because yeah. you know I don't put yeah. a quarter in my radio in the morning to listen to you. So right, right. you know, the money's coming from somewhere else. Yes. Um, and so if the, you know if the if the president has an ideological beef with broadcasters, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, radio and TV, generally speaking, is going to do what's going to bring in advertising and the highest ratings. So if it's bashing Trump, well. That's more than likely what they're going to do. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. Fox, you know, Fox News obviously is the is the exception of the rule, but they had a, a business plan that went the other way, and strangely and, uh, enough, worked. Yeah, I mean, and, for twenty and, years, and, I kept yeah. saying that you could never do that. Right, that's way back to the penny press kind of stuff. Yeah. But and they're leading the way. I mean, by far uh, leading the way in in terms of ratings. I have a theory on that. That is. Um, people who are most interested in politics oftentimes tend to be uh, oh, guys. Yeah. Conservatives are very, very strong when it comes to politics, and they have a, a, a very strong audience right there that is very, very dedicated, and it's worked for them. Yeah, I always think back to the studies I've seen where they ask uh, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox viewers about uh, facts about the world. Yeah. And uh, the findings are often starkly different. Different, yeah. That's uh, uh, yeah, so it's different worlds, yeah, yeah. and certainly they're speaking different languages. But I mean, at some point, you got to you got to face the facts that there are real things going on in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to have to find agreement on those if we're going to survive about, uh, three mo- three and three years and ten more months. Or- how about uh, how about the uh, the, uh, the social media, the blogs? Uh, it seems that on one hand, you could say yeah. we have the the most opportunity now. Just anybody could have the most opportunity to get their message out today. Uh, like never before. On the other hand, it's a very crowded field. Oh, my goodness, yeah. And, you know, I told my students as a, as a really personal example, I have to say I really regret this. All the way through the presidential campaign, one of my relatives who was friends of mine on Facebook was, I mean, hardcore Trump, 100, yeah. 110%. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not shy about my politics, but uh, I'm, I'm, not a, you know, I'm not a fan of the current president. I'm very yeah. worried about state of politics in the country. I'm, I'm yeah. really worried about... You know, survival of the media so that uh, you know that we have a vibrant democracy but at the yeah. same time I have to admit I really appreciated reading the stuff she was posting on her Facebook page because I don't I don't have you know I don't have an avenue into that community I don't yeah, know yeah. what these folks think 
And, you know, things just got to the point where, and I don't think I'm very different. You know, it's not unusual. I was She unfriended me, my own family. You know, and I, and I hear lots of people saying this. So like, some buddies aren't, aren't hanging out together yeah. anymore yeah. and all this yeah. kind of stuff, and it's just gotten ugly. Yeah. And I got to say, I mean, I would cringe and grind my teeth when I would read some of the stuff she would post, and every now and then I'd make the stupid mistake of trying to ask her to explain something, and it would always end up with a link to a – a YouTube video of a guy with a whiteboard explaining like what the numbers in the Bible <laughs> yeah, mean, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I, I, I got to say, you know, now out. I lost, you know, I lost that insight into what's yeah, going on. Yeah. You know, we, we hang around with people like ourselves. I, I don't have uh, friends. You have that one are, conservative friend. You have just one. It was a family member, <laughs> <laughs> and that so, was not by choice. Thought I so, thought I knew her. I, I, wow. I, I, can, I, can we go more into? <laughs> we had that a because, story. We so, had a story yesterday of a couple that that. Divorced over this election. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know. Luckily, my wife and I agree on politics. Well, that helps, I guess. Because so. I'm unbearable. So thank goodness <laughs> yeah. for her. Do you? Uh, have, by the way, Jeffrey Miller is a associate professor, professor at uh, at Utica College. Can you offer any insight into why, regardless of what side you're on, people feel like they are the spokesman for the movement <laughs> and they think that they have the answer that explains to everyone, especially the opposition why their position on whatever the issue is is the right position to have i am so worn down like i don't i try to unless i'm posting something for the station i avoid facebook at all costs all it is is political commentary and really it's it's we talk about this it's very extreme both sides very extreme yeah, yeah, both and sides. everything yeah. is an example of why i'm right and you're wrong yeah. why has social media f- evolved into this yeah i don't know why it brings that out in all of us i i haven't posted a photo of a cat hanging off of a branch for months i mean it just <laughs> you know instead it's like uh, you know you don't want to be on my wall it's like yeah. oh my gosh did you see the neo-nazis rioting in sweden it's like, <laughs> you know who wants to read you know after a, after a while i just think what you know? i know but you know I, I think there is a pairing away of like you know who your friends are and who your followers are and you know the, and i can tell that the people have dropped off that don't they don't answer. They don't ask questions anymore. Those are the people that probably have just like not looking yeah. at my wall anymore. And, yeah. and you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm trying to see what what the other side thinks, but I mean, we're just so polarized at the moment. It's been building. I, I, I'm not shocked that we got here. Yeah, I'm just shocked at where we ended up. Do you think what what is? Uh, I do wonder. Um, I, I wonder what's caused all of this divide. And you know, I, I think we saw a very interesting divide in the 1960s and early 70s. Yeah. And um, there was a great deal of social change. And during the Obama administration, you have to, let's face it, a lot of social change. Uh, the, the gay issue, um, uh, obviously uh, affordable health care, um, transgender. Yeah. I mean, for God's sakes, Bruce Jenner. Um, a lot of change. Yeah, and for every action is a reaction. And right? I think that, do you think that could be some of it? Yeah, I think there's been a speeding up in history, too. I mean, yeah. it took a while. The 1960s into the 70s, everybody sort of, you know, trailed off into their own sort of thing. And then we had sort of political backlash in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's, it, it seems to be faster now. Um, I mean, this, you know, this is a, a reaction against progressive advances in eight years of, of, of President Obama, I think. You yeah. Know, it's, yeah. Uh, I just think a lot of a lot of people are surprised at, um, you know, what 27 percent of the electorate can can accomplish. It is, and and that's something to be. Uh, you said you 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 don't necessarily like this president, um, and I have to say you're not alone yeah. because many of the people that, uh, that that voted for him feel the very same way. You'll have people say, "Listen, I just I want somebody yeah. that's going to shake things up. I don't yeah. like him necessarily. Yeah. I want I mean, he's something my different." President, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, but at the same time, I don't know. I, I was raised that. You're not supposed to be a braggart. I was raised yeah. that you're supposed to be nice to people. I, you know, all, all the kind of stuff that – and I keep – you know, my students are too young to remember this, but you probably remember. Remember the commercial on the on the TV years ago? A bunch of cowboys are on the campfire, and they ran out of salsa. And so what do they do? They yell for cookie. And he yeah. comes out with a jar, and they open up, and the guy looks on the back, and he goes, New York City. New York and that, City every, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. The, you know, that was like the mood yeah. in the, the southern half of the country, yeah. right? Yes. So really amazing that someone who really is like – painfully exaggerated caricature of New yeah. York City yes. could sweep the South. Yeah. It's, you know, I'm not a political and, and, scientist, but, I mean, they must be having a meltdown in that department right now trying to figure this yeah. out. And, uh, the, and, the, uh, and the, the fact that he's, uh, he's a billionaire and he now represents the, uh, the yeah. common man, uh, that is the, that's also extremely interesting how we got there. But it has happened, and it's, uh, it's something I think uh, people that study this stuff will be 
uh, debating over for many, yeah. many years. So. I wish I was that working class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, a lot my of gold fo- there. I turned gold. the volume off as I'm bing, bing, binging over here from Jim Zecca. <clears throat> yeah. he, he asks what political persuasion you are. Hey, I said, Jim. <laughs> he asks what your political persuasion is, and I said, uh, Jim, are you listening? I, I think it's clear. And he said, well, you have to ask him. Yeah, I'm a two-fisted progressive. Jim knows that. Uh, okay, so you're, you're Hi, well. Jim. Good morning. You know Jim, you know Jim? Jim. Oh, Of course. Uh, how do you not know Jim Zecca uh, around here, uh, right? From the I mean, show or, or protests oh, from, that you see? No, from way back. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I always got along with Jim. Yeah. I, I have to tell you that we don't have to agree, uh, don't have to agree on politics. To get one along. of my favorite moments uh, during the entire campaign was when Jim and his Trump crew would come in. It was something I personally enjoyed. Mm. Uh, so hey, we can all get along, I guess. So, um, yeah, hope we anyway. can try. We certainly can try. Two fisted progressive. Huh? Uh, uh, Jeffrey Miller, Doctor Jeffrey Miller. Uh, let's do this again. Uh, love talking the media stuff. So for some reason, I yeah, love thanks, talking. Guys.